Hello, my fellow travelers, and welcome back to another travel guide from here at Tales from the Road. My name is Pierce. Thanks for stopping by. Today, because you clicked on this video, we're obviously going to talk about the beautiful and very enchanting, mysterious nation of Bolivia in South America. I spent just about 15 days traveling from the north to the south of this country, and I have to say it's one of the most unique places I've been on the planet and probably my favorite place that I went to as far as travel is concerned in South America. My goal with these videos is to give you an unbiased opinion of Bolivia. I want to tell you everything I experienced in a way that will help you enjoy your travels, prepare for your travels, and just sort of get a better feel for the country. So that's the point. You're going to learn everything you need to know before you go. And if you have any questions, of course, you can, of course, put them in the comments and I will definitely try and answer them. So are you ready to travel to Bolivia? Let's do it. So first things first, where is Bolivia? Bolivia is smack dab right in the center of South America, a place that's very interconnected within the border regions, but very disconnected because of the region it's in, lying heavily in the Andes Altiplano, the highlands, a very mountainous, very high altitude, very hard to navigate region of South America. That being said, it has Brazil, Paraguay, Chile, Argentina, Peru, all as border countries, and it's very feasible to go from one to another to another to another. You just really have to plan because the roads in Bolivia, quite hard to navigate, and the flights in and out of Bolivia are a bit expensive. That being said, if you want to travel within South America, Bolivia is a good launching point or a midpoint on any South American journey. When we're looking at Bolivian history, the country itself is incredibly culturally diverse and quite complicated for a foreigner to really understand. The most important things to understand is that Bolivia was a crossing ground for many South American indigenous tribes, both small and incredibly large. Large including like the Inca, who were basically the largest South American empire to exist in the pre-Columbian times. And then of course all the other various tribes and tribal groups that lived in that area that were either incorporated into the Incan empire or were kind of by themselves isolated as this was a very isolated region in the entire continent. That being said, for a traveler, there's really the three time periods you need to know about. The pre-Columbian indigenous communities, including the Incan Empire and the other empires that predated the Incans, super interesting. The Spanish colonial empire, which sort of created the modern day cities that we find in Bolivia, a lot of the architecture that we see, and of course the Spanish that's spoken all across the country. And then of course the modern Bolivian state, which has moved politically around various identities, various politics, lots of different presidents, and is very interesting if you go down into the political thing. This of course isn't that, this is a travel guide, but if you're interested in the Bolivian history, I would certainly recommend reading up on it. It's a really deep and complex place and it deserves a book worth of information before you go there, if you really wanna get the, the nuances. First things first, we've got to talk about visas, getting into Bolivia, specifically as an American, because I think Americans have a different uh, entry point than a lot of other Europeans, Canadians do, because Bolivia and the United States do not have the best political relationship. The reason for this political relationship issue, um, the central issue, is actually the coca plant, which is a native plant that indigenous Bolivians have been using as a medicinal and traditional sort of thing within their religion for thousands of years. Um, obviously the coca plant can be refined into cocaine, which the United States does not like. The United States has told Bolivia multiple times, you're not allowed to grow your coca plant. You need to try and sort of like hone in on the coca regions because that's a lot of narco trafficking issues. But the Bolivians are like, no, we're not doing that. It's our right, it's our uh, traditional religious plant and we're not doing it. So that being said, if you're American going to Bolivia, the visa process is a little bit more expensive than you would expect. And it's actually the only visa that you need in the entirety of South America. Basically what happens is when you come in the country, you can come of course by bus from some surrounding country or you can come by plane, which is what I probably recommend doing. Uh, you'll apply for a visa on arrival you'll probably need a copy of your passport as well as any medical documentation. And sometimes they want little passport photos. It really just depends like what they want at the moment. You're also going to have to have 160 US dollars in cash, although sometimes they take cards, sometimes they don't. It was really extra confusing. When I got to La Paz and I checked in through the customs, uh, it is a visa on arrival. So you fill out some information and then you hand over your cash. 
For some reason, they wanted to make a copy of our passport. They didn't have a printer. We had to wait two hours in the airport between one in the morning and three in the morning. It was a very arduous and confusing process. So if you want to save yourself that trouble, make sure to have a copy of all your travel related documents printed out and ready to go as well as cash in hand. So you can just hand all that over and then they can just make the visa for you there um, quicker than relying on them to you know, find extra documents, find copies, find a printer. Um, it is not the most, uh, let's say, quick administrative country. So just have that in mind. And if you do all that, you'll be able to get the visa no problem. Uh, I believe it's a 10-year visa. Uh, so you can use it the times that you go into Bolivia for the next 10 years or five years. It just depends what you want to get. Um, and with that visa, you can stay upwards of 30 days within that visa. Then you have to leave. You can always come back. Sometimes it's 90 days. I think it just depends what passport you're coming from. So uh, that's a little bit more info than you'll find online. Uh, just be prepared is the main point. And you'll be visa okay for Bolivia. Money. Money in Bolivia is pretty straightforward. You can either take in cash and exchange it while you're there, of course, at a bank or a cambio or whatever, whatever situation you want. You can use the ATMs. Do they accept all cards? Hard to say. Um, I had my card rejected a couple times. Um, I have Visa. I have MasterCard. Sometimes you just have to try. I always use like legit banks. There's lots of different bank ATMs that you'll be able to find. Um, that's what I normally do when I travel. I don't normally carry a bunch of cash with me because if you get robbed, it sucks. The uh, Bolivians, they use a, a money called the Bolivar or Boliviano, something like that. And basically, it's pretty devalued, so you're going to end up with a lot of cash when you're walking around there. And the main point is that you don't want to rely on your cards too much because uh, a lot of people are operating solely on cash. You can get away, actually, with U.S. dollars in some areas. They'll definitely accept it. But it's better to have a, like a wallet full of uh, Bolivianos to use uh, during your time there. Don't assume that you'll be able to pay anything with card, especially online even. Um, it is a pretty old school country, so having enough cash is definitely the way to go. If you're buying a tour, you're also probably going to have to pay in cash. Uh, they will accept dollars. Sometimes they'll accept euros. But in general, cash is king in Bolivia, so make sure you have enough uh, to safely operate, to catch buses, to pay for any incidentals that might come up to pay for taxis and all that good stuff. So the question is, is it expensive? Bolivia itself is not expensive for tourists. Um, I found it was much cheaper than the uh, Valle Sagrada, which is like in Cusco in the southern part of Peru. Bolivia, you can have a lot of the same experiences there, but it's like half the price. Uh, I just think the economy in, in Bolivia is a lot cheaper. A lot of the tours that you can buy, the day-to-day -day trip stuff um, is also just generally a lot cheaper. The food is pretty cheap, but of course the quality of certain things is, let's just say, not as good as you can find in Peru just because there's been a lot more money in Peru for a lot longer. Um, that being said, I think you can eat food, for example, in Bolivia for 2 to $4 per dish. You can do a lot of the tours that are very inexpensive, $20 for the day, $30 for the day. I mean, they're like really good deals. And as far as accommodation, you can also find pretty cheap not the best accommodation in the world, but pretty cheap accommodation. Um, you know, talking twenty to forty dollars per night for a private room. Hostels can obviously be cheaper. It really depends on you. But I thought the value that you get in Bolivia versus Peru for a lot of the same feeling as far as traveling is concerned, um, much better in Bolivia. Transportation. The transportation in Bolivia is honestly pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie to you. Getting around the country takes a lot of time, and traveling within the cities is also complicated because. Every region, except if you go towards the Amazonian regions, are incredibly mountainous. Most of Bolivia, I'd say like 60%, lies in the Andes Altiplano, which is basically Andes highlands. So basically, you're going to whip through mountains, you're going to go through these narrow like uh, roads, uh, which obviously adds a lot of travel time, regardless of what you're doing. If you're traveling more on the Amazonian side, uh, obviously the travel time is a little bit less, but uh, the roads in Bolivia are not amazing, so don't imagine things are going to happen quickly. Uh, buses around the country, uh, they function pretty well. Every place has a bus station. They have a lot of tourists in Bolivia. It's kind of like improving, so you can get to everywhere you need to go to. Just know that the travel time is like super long. Uh, like for example, I went to La Paz to a the secondary city called Sucre. Sucre is... Uh, it is not that far on the map. It's like 400, 500 miles, which is pretty far, but it took us like 13 hours with a night bus. So imagine a day bus is probably going to take more time because there's more traffic. Super rough. 
Um, Bolivia also has uh, like local airlines that you can take to other cities that you may want to go to, such as Cochabamba, such as Uyuni. Um, you can definitely go this route. Uh, I don't know if the Bolivian Airplane Safety Association is really that good. Um, I know a lot of them don't fly out of Bolivia because they don't meet the standards of international aviation law and standards. So take that as you will. Um, I would probably take the planes. I, I know a lot of people that do. Uh, traveling by taxi is also pretty goofy because uh, Bolivia is pretty um, impoverished, honestly, and they don't have like nice new taxis. A lot of the taxis are just, you know, sort of cars that people own. So every transportation method you're going to do in Bolivia is sort of, let's just say like, you know, the owner of the thing does the job. So is it like a super service? Probably not. Will people get you from A to B? Definitely. Will they have seat belts in their cars? Maybe not. Uh, will the car be a good car? Also, maybe not. Uh, there's a lot of risk uh, taking any sort of transportation in Bolivia, so you have to be aware of that for sure. Although uh, the dangerous aspects of it, I don't think it's any more dangerous than any other country you're traveling in. There's just a sort of more like homegrown, less professional feeling, regardless if you're taking buses, planes, definitely no trains, and then of course taxis and other cars. A quick note real quick about the health situation in Bolivia. Bolivia is not a modern country in a lot of senses, but they do have all of the, you know, hospital facilities that you could need. The one thing that you need to know if you go to the western half of Bolivia, the Altiplano, is that the altitude is really, really high. What that means is it's harder for your body to process oxygen that is in the air. So, kind of like a big tip would be don't drink alcohol when you first get to Bolivia because the alcohol interacts with the oxygen and the rest of the different things in your bloodstream and your body, and you will get way drunker way faster, and you can black out and really hurt yourself and wake up in the hospital even after a lot less alcohol than you would normally drink. There's a lot of terrible stories about tourists staying in hostels. They go out, they drink five, six beers with their friends, they end up in the hospital the next day. People have even died from this, so just don't drink. That would be my recommendation. One thing that they do recommend, and I'm not recommending you take an illegal drug, but it's legal in Bolivia, is uh, a lot of the Bolivians to deal with the altitude sickness is they chew the coca leaf. First and foremost, the coca leaf is not cocaine. Cocaine is refined using a lot of other chemicals and it is only a fraction of what coca leaf really is. The coca leaf is something that is chewed typically with some sort of bicarbonate in order to sort of release the, uh, the effects uh, in your mouth when you're chewing it. The coca leaf is a mild stimulant and it improves the, your general blood flow in your body, which is why they say it helps the, uh, the altitude sickness. Whether this is true or false, I'm not sure, but a lot of indigenous people believe in it and a lot of people will tell you when you're there, this is what you should do. So you can, you cannot, totally up to you. I did it, I'm not sure it really helped. It could be psychosomatic, hard to say. Uh, that being said, uh, in every place in Bolivia, specifically cities, they have places where you can go uh, hook yourself up to an oxygen tank if you're feeling really bad. If you think that you need help, go to a hospital, go to a local doctor. They'll put you on an oxygen meter so they can see the oxygen uh, in your blood. And then if they think it's the right thing to do, they'll hook you up to an oxygen thing. I did it. I don't think I really needed it. I just have asthma and I was a little bit scared. Um, I think it did help, but it will certainly take you a little while to adjust. When you land, especially in La Paz from a place, if you fly in from you know, a place that's like low altitude, you'll probably feel dizzy, you won't feel well, you won't feel hungry, you'll feel off. That's how a lot of people feel, that's how I felt for sure. Um, it does get better, but it makes hiking, walking, experiencing the country a little bit more challenging. So if you're coming to Bolivia to do something physical, um, be aware that it's gonna take you a couple days to acclimate yourself uh, because of the altitude. So it's something to be aware. I think a lot of people assume they can do it with no problem. That's very true for a lot of tourists. For other tourists, it's a disaster and it really ruins your trip. So take it slow, take it easy, take care of yourself. Safety. The safety in Bolivia actually comes down to what time you're walking around and what you're doing. So regarding moving around in cities, the most dangerous city probably that you'll go to in, um, in Bolivia is either going to be La Paz because La Paz is the capital city, has the most amount of people, and there's actually a region of La Paz which is the highest most populated area in the entire world, if you're talking about altitude, which is called El Alto, which means the high. 
Um, that area is known for being pretty sketchy. There's lots of videos online um, where, you know, people walking around. Honestly, I went up there. They have a huge, massive market, like one of the biggest markets you can find, uh, I think, in the entirety of South America. Uh, I believe it's on Sundays or Saturdays. It depends on the day. Uh, you can check that out yourself. And that uh, is, is quite the experience. But everybody, uh, every time I made content there, everybody's like, wow, you, you're really lucky. Your phone didn't get stolen. You need to be really careful. I didn't find it any more sketchy than any other place that I went to in the entirety of South America. So you can take that as some information. There is some gang violence also up there as well. So something to be aware of. Uh, the other city that you're going to want to watch out in is Uyuni, which is uh, basically where you go into the Uyuni Salt Flats, one of the, well, I think, the biggest tourist destination in the whole country. The only reason you have to be aware there is because it is the number one tourist destination in the country. The city itself is very poor and very desolate. So I think uh, people there, uh, you know, if they see the opportunity to steal a camera, steal a phone, steal your shoes, steal your backpack, they probably would honestly. So um, that being said, I found Bolivia to be the least sketchy country in all of South America as far as walking around and feeling safe. What I mean by that is, is in Colombia, in uh, parts of, of Buenos Aires and Argentina, certainly in Brazil, definitely in Santiago, Chile, when you walk around, not that it's particularly dangerous, like just walking around in the day, but there is this air of something could go wrong at any moment, specifically when I was in Colombia. It's like, you know, someone could pull up on a motorbike and steal everything you have or put a gun in your face or something. I don't know. Um, but it happens to a lot of people in South America. Realistically, in Bolivia, when I was in Sucre, when I was in Potosi, when I was in La Paz, when I was in um, all these other cities that I visited in Bolivia, I really felt pretty safe. The people were very friendly. Um, a lot of the older people were not super interested in talking with you or sort of interacting. Uh, they seem to like not really be interested in connecting with any Westerners, which I think is to your benefit. And a lot of young people are very much like known within the community. It feels very communal, especially even in La Paz, which is a big city. So maybe uh, the safety and security is a little bit more based on that, where it's a little bit less anonymous, more traditional communities, more indigenous related, like familial communities. So that being said, I didn't actually feel sketched out at all when I was in Bolivia even in El Alto, which is theoretically the most dangerous place in the whole country. So, of course, you have to be aware of pickpockets. Don't walk around anywhere you shouldn't be, specifically at night, as a tourist. If you, if you stick out, your chance in South America of getting robbed is way higher. So don't stick out. Um, stick to the tourist places. Know where you are. Look around you. And I think if you follow those rules, 99% you should just be fine. That's a full South America rule, but you just have to have that like extra level of awareness because of course things can always go wrong. So now it's on to my favorite section, which is food. Bolivian food is very interesting and honestly very regional because you have the Altiplano cuisine, which is a very specific type of indigenous person that lives in that area, as well as the fact that it's also quite cold weather, so they can't grow a lot of the tropical you know, fruits and things that you might find on the Eastern side of Bolivia, the side that's closer to Brazil. There, it's super hot all like the whole year. They're able to grow a lot of interesting fruits and vegetables. And really, there's two different like totalities of cuisines that you can find in Bolivia because of this. That being said, some of the foods that you have to try when you go to Bolivia include the salteña, which is a Bolivian type of empanada, which I'd like to compare to a soup dumpling. I actually ate this totally wrong and was completely roasted on TikTok. So if you eat it, bite the top and, and sip it like this. Do not break it in half like the gringo that I am. Um, other things that are interesting that you can find are all these indigenous types of potatoes, which um, obviously pota the potatoes come from the Andes region, um, the original potatoes. So they have like 150, 700, 800, 1,000 different types of potatoes. Very, very interesting. All taste very different. And especially in the Altiplano side, you can eat uh, llama and alpaca, which is uh, definitely an experience you want to try. Um, I really found the meat to be pretty good. I went to a llama barbecue when I was in Uyuni. Uh, very nice, uh, you know, very interesting. And then they do a lot of interesting things with local corn, local vegetables. And then if you go towards the uh, eastern part of the country where it's warmer, you can have all these interesting fruits and vegetables, especially stuff that you can put in smoothies and you can eat on the side. Um, Bolivia is really where Spanish cuisine, the concept of, you know, the, the plate lunch, the soups and stuff, it mixes with the indigenous 
sort of things that grow there and also the traditional foods of the traditional peoples that have been there forever. So um, if you want to try South American cuisine that's not hyper Spanish like influenced, this is probably the country to do it in and there are some beautiful dishes to try. So this is the point in the video where I tell you uh, what I did, what I liked, and what I would certainly recommend. So first of all, you have to go to the city of La Paz. La Paz is the heartbeat, the youthful capital of this Andes nation. Uh, there's, it's such an interesting city. They have a funicular or like, a, like cable cars that are transporting people all over this very mountainous city with roads that really go like this. Very hard to walk around because the altitude is so high. It's like really hard to breathe. A um, lot of history, really old Spanish style churches, really funky markets. They have a thing called the Mercado de Bruja, which is like the witch's market. You can see like dried alpaca babies and you can buy all these weird spices and stuff for these traditional indigenous um, kind of shamanistic rituals. Very interesting. Um, El Alto, as you can see, sort of the new expansion of this city. Um, again, it's a little dangerous. The market is incredible. You have to go to the market and you go up there by the cable car. You, it's the most interesting way I've ever traveled around a city. And you see these huge high peaks behind um, because it is very deserty in La Paz, but then you get these high, like sort of um, frosted mountains. Uh, it's, I mean, it's spectacular. There's no other thing to say besides it's spectacular. Um, you, of course, have to also go to Lake Titicaca, all the way in the north on the border of Peru. There is a really beautiful island, like right in the middle, that you can get to by boat called uh, Island of the Sun. Also very cool. You stay in a city called Copacabana, just like the beach in Rio, uh, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, and Copacabana has a beautiful, like, uh, a beautiful access to Lake Titicaca. It's the highest altitude lake in the world. Really deep blue waters, and you can climb up to the kind of like a top mountain point. And you can see the entire lake. They have these old sort of like shamanistic rituals, people lighting candles, saying prayers. It's very mystical, very wonderful, very interesting. Next, uh, you have to sort of head down south through the Altiplano. Um, before that, you can stop in, of course, Cochabamba, which is like the kitchen of Bolivia. All of the very famous foods and dishes theoretically come from this area, and that city's super proud of it. Uh, it's also the second largest city in Bolivia, so you can really, of course, feel another interesting city vibe. The best things that you can do besides the cities, I'm a big city person, is of course get outside and kind of see what's going on. I went to a city called Potosi. Uh, Potosi is an old Spanish silver mining town at the foot of like a massive mountain. It's also like, like 4,800 meters above sea level, very, very high altitude, but such a unique and interesting place. This place was the center of Spanish silver mining and one of the richest places in the entire world in the 1600s. Uh, obviously things have changed a lot since then, but it has one of the most beautiful Spanish old towns I think I've ever seen. And it's just so unique. You can still go into the silver mine, um, although it seems a little bit unethical these days. Um, but from there, you can do a lot of other really interesting, like high altitude mountain exploring and some really cool hikes. So that's a good place you have to visit. Sucre um, is the secondary capital of Bolivia. Uh, they call this the White City. Beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, like just extremely nice vibe. Also, you can do really cool day trips from there. I wouldn't say it's the most interesting place in the world, but spend a day, explore the churches in the old town, certainly worth it. Um, on the way down, you'll hit the uh, Uyuni. Uyuni, you have to go to. It's like easily one of the coolest things that I've ever done in my life. It is the salt flats that border the sort of Atacama Desert. And the salt flats are completely white and it creates a perfect reflection when you get to the area where there's sort of water on the salt bed. So in the summertime, there's more water because you get a lot of runoff from the, from the icy mountains. Uh, in the winter, uh, you get a little bit less, but you can still definitely do it. I did it during the winter and it's just incredible. You spend the day, you go out to the salt flats, uh, you take pictures, you walk around, you see the most amazing sunset you've probably ever seen. Then normally you stay the night in a salt hotel. That's always kind of goofy, but was definitely worth it. And then what I would recommend is to wake up super early, like 2, 3 in the morning, find a tour guide that will take you for the sunrise. You get to see the most amazing view of the stars like you'll ever see, like zero light pollution, like it's crazy. And then the sun comes up and everything is like a mirror. And it's it's even hard to explain. It's hard to put into words. You just have to do it. It's easily one of the coolest places you can, you can definitely go to. From Uyuni, a lot of people head east because now you're in the south of Bolivia and you can head east into the uh, sort of Amazonian region. 
in this region, totally different vibe. Um, obviously, you're out of the Altiplano, so it's not as cold. And you really get to experience a city that's much more like a Brazilian city. The food's different. The people are different. Again, really nice uh, and very interesting um, old towns. And something that would finish your trip in a very different way than you started it, which is, I think, what I love the most about Bolivia. In summary, here's why you should go to Bolivia. Number one, incredible nature. Number two, cities like you've really never experienced before. Number three, the food is super solid. Number four, it's pretty inexpensive, so you get a lot of bang for your buck. And number five, the country is just so, so diverse. The high altitude, the low altitude, the mountains, the lakes, the rivers, the Amazon rainforest. I mean, like literally, if you want to go to South America, you can do all of it within just the confines of Bolivia. And on top of that, it's the most indigenous country like in the whole of South America. And so you really get a feel that's different than this sort of half Spanish, half indigenous thing you find in a lot of other South Americans or just very Spanish influences, influenced, very Portuguese influenced, very Italian influenced. Um, Bolivia is something very special. The people dress like the place. The people talk like the place. A lot of people don't speak Spanish as their native language. A lot of people don't interact with the same world that a lot of other modern Latin Americans do. And I think that's why traveling to Bolivia is so unique. It sort of felt like going to Asia, but in South America. And that's why I fell in love with it. So I hope this guide was helpful. Um, this is my experience. Please, of course, comment below if you have anything else that you'd like to ask me. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one travel consulting session, uh, DM me and I'll get back to you. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This is the Tales from the Road Travel Guide in Bolivia. I have a bunch of these travel guides for different countries around the world, so keep coming back for more. Every Sunday, I'm going to try to do a new travel guide, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm also cooking a dish from every country in the world, and I cooked a beautiful dish from Bolivia called Pique Macho, which is a weird dish of fries and different sorts of meats, and it's a very weird mix of only things that could happen in Bolivia. So you can check that out on my Instagram, on my TikTok, on my YouTube, all of those things. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios, amigos.